A resident's journey of transformation is just that, a journey, moving from desperation to healing and stability. Our goal is for lasting change, and this takes time. For this reason, we dedicate ourselves to doing the hard work of each step of healing. After over 26 years of serving Denver's homeless and abused, we know that we must begin by meeting a person's most basic need, safety. We meet most of our residents at a place of desperation, a quest for survival. And what we offer them is a place of refuge. I was, uh, was drinking about a you know, half a gallon of vodka a day and uh, living in and out of motels. Um, at one point I lived in the woods for six months and it's a very isolating disease and I, I would say I, I talk to my parents once or twice a year during the peak of my addiction and, and that breaks my heart. I finally hit rock bottom when uh, you know I woke up one morning and I'm, I'm in a motel. The heat's been off, it's the middle of winter. I have a broken foot. I have uh, bruises from head to toe. It was absolutely hopeless. The only way out was, was either suicide or drinking myself or using to death. There was no way to hide anymore that I had a problem. You know. So I, I decided to scrape up the change to walk the block and a half to, uh, to the payphone. I called my parents and, uh, and they got the call they'd always been praying for that I, w I wanted to get some help. I hadn't prayed a lot at that point. Uh, it was sort of new to me. I asked God for both for forgiveness and for to help me on this road, which seemed absolutely impossible, but it wasn't with God. And uh, you know that's how I began my road to Providence. Once a resident's life has been stabilized with their basic needs of shelter, food, clothing, and health care being established, we begin to focus on healthy relationships. When our residents move into one of our first step homes, they're not only experiencing physical safety, they're also experiencing safe relationships. Trust does not come easily or automatically. Because our staff live in the homes with our residents, they are offering a real-life model for what it is to have healthy, safe, loving relationships. Consider where Jesus met people. He met them in the everyday, normal activities. In His presence, they felt love and respect. He not only talked with the woman at the well, He sat with her. This is how the Providence Network staff approaches relationships. We sit, we listen, we eat together, laugh together, and cry together. Like any family, we share in the daily responsibilities that make our household function. As residents begin to understand what healthy relationships look and feel like, healing can begin. Our homes are filled with men, women, and children who have experienced trauma and lifetimes of abuse. Healing doesn't come quickly, but within the context of our homes, they are able to experience the freedom that safety and healthy relationships offer. This is the soil of healing and growth, where residents in our first step homes move towards becoming self-sufficient. Case management with our staff focuses on vocational training to gain an employable skill, addictions and mental health counseling, education and spiritual nurturing. It's the nitty gritty of everyday life. How to interview for a job, control medications, break old relational patterns, open a checking account, manage a grocery budget, excuse a sick child from school. These are daily tasks our residents have the chance to learn and practice within our community. This step is where we celebrate residents in their milestones like they've never been celebrated before. Because accomplishments like staying sober, passing GED tests, making good parenting decisions, and changing destructive habits should be celebrated. God rejoices in these victories, and so do we. Once residents achieve stability and are able to lead more independent lives, they are given the opportunity to move into next step housing. 
These are long-term apartment communities where staff and fellow residents are available for accountability and encouragement. These next step buildings offer first step graduates affordable, safe, substance-free places to call home. Looking back now, it's really night and day uh, how much my life's changed. After spending um, two years of wonderful healing here at Providence House, I was able to move into their um, sober living apartments called Victory House, which um, I think is really important for the, the transition phase where you, you start to, to get some more freedom. And to have that support system follow you was absolutely key for me. I was able to get enrolled in school, go in pre-med, you know, 3.4 GPA. I have a good job that I enjoy, and I have uh, good friends that are supportive of, of my sobriety. I am a changed life. As our residents move through the first four stages, they have been learning they have something to offer the world. They are now free to pursue their unique gifts and a purpose that extends beyond themselves. Whether they do this through simple friendship, mentoring, volunteering, or paid work, our residents understand that the larger Providence Network community invested in them, and now they should invest in others. This is not just an investment of time and talents on the part of our Next Step residents. It is a financial investment as well. The rent they pay in Next Step housing goes back into our general operating budget for the First Step homes. As residents break cycles of generational poverty, abuse, and addictions in their own families, they are helping others do the same in a holistic way. You know, I think what's different um, with Providence Network and other programs uh, is the focus on developing a personal relationship with Christ. What excites me now is to be able to um, give back and to change lives as, as they changed mine.